Hello there, guys. Uh, Obi-Wan Kenobi here. Um, I just had to make this video uh, for obvious reasons after watching The Mandalorian final episode and I wanted to do a comparison of Luke Skywalker's uh, green lightsaber. And today we have the Corbanth, Alice One, Hero Supreme. Dennis Lukianov's V3, um, Creepy Uncle. The Disney Galaxy's Edge, Luke, Return of the Jedi. And the Hasbro Black Series, Luke, Return of the Jedi. The video is going to be a little long. As you can see, I haven't put the triangle on, on these two yet. But um, uh, just for your information, it's much smaller than that. Okay, so let's start with some explanation. This model from Corbanth, um, I think, uh, uh, made in collaboration with LDM Customs, is uh, meant to resemble Luke uh, in Return of the Jedi, so Episode Six, right? And the Creepy Uncle by Denis Lukianov is to resemble Luke in The Last Jedi, Episode 8. So there are going to be some differences. The Disney one is, I'd say, a mix between the two. And the Hasbro one, um, probably more like Return of the Jedi. But anyway, let's, let's start with this one. So this is pretty awesome. Uh, I, I think it's one of the best work from Corbanth and Audium Customs. It feels very good in your hand. The scale is very accurate. You can see the uneven rings on here, which also exists on the real prop for Luke's episode six lightsaber. Um, the detailing is pretty immaculate. You know, um, static and vented pommel given. Um, Return of the Jedi and The Last Jedi emitter, both also given in this uh, packaging, but I've put the Return of the Jedi stuff on. Um, it just looks great. The neck's obviously darker than the version in Episode 8. And, you know, I'm, I'm very pleasantly surprised about this piece. I'd say, you know... Um, right now for me is the top three most accurate Luke Return of the Jedi lightsaber. Uh, you know, there's a few other ones like the uh, MOM from Seven Chambers that's on the way to me. I'll do a comparison on who's more accurate at, the, at that time. That should supposed to be, you know, the most accurate one. Also, you you know, you have stuff like Anakin Starkiller. You've got Dave Parkin's static ones. That one is also awesome. But, uh, well, this is the most accurate piece I have on my hand. This one, no question, the most uh, accurate um, Luke, the last Jedi lightsaber. A uh, noticeable difference first is slightly smaller than the Return of the Jedi one, the Corbanth one. Um, the rings are even. They're all a little bit bigger in size. The length, though, stays pretty much, I'm going to say exactly the same. I'm going to say exactly the same length, right? A little different proportions, but the total length is the same. The emitter obviously has the holes here, so it looks different. The neck is gold, obviously it's a bit more weathered if you want it closer to the actual prop. The arrows are bigger, as you can see here, comparing to the two, um, but both very high quality and very high end. Now let's go to the Disney one. Disney, Galaxy's Edge. This one, uh, sorry, I forgot to talk about the price. So this one retails for the hill only um, for I think $140 plus tax, $139.99 plus tax, I just rounded up. Uh, this one is $295. I think this one, I'm not sure. It's about $300, I think. Um, this one is uh, 140 and it, you know, it comes with electronics already. These two are empty. 
Uh, this one, the Black Series, I think is $175. Uh, with this one, you need a blade, which is right here. Uh, you get this extra piece. I'm sure a lot of people have already seen this, but there's this piece for the Galaxy's Edge to swap out to put the blade in because, uh, you know, um, it's designed uh, to, to, to work that way. It's not like a custom saber. That's why custom sabers are much more accurate, much more expensive. But, you know, overall, the color scheme is very close to the, the Creepy Uncle. Um, you can see it very similar gold it's a lot uh fatter it's a lot thicker I'll remove the core band for a second it's a lot bigger right in size but we all know uh galaxy's edge and force fx are going to be chunkier than the real thing anyway but this one this one is is bigger but acceptable bigger the only problem is if you want to turn it on you have to remove this section right you need to put this one in so that the blade can go in. Now, when you put this back in, it doesn't look anywhere near as accurate anymore. You know, now it's still got the same color scheme and the same length, but it looks a lot closer to the force effects. You know, in terms of size, scale and everything, I smudged that a little bit, but you know, so now, now it doesn't look quite as pretty. This neck is obviously more like the painted neck, which is more like Return of the Jedi. Uh, this neck resembles probably the last Jedi more. Um, but either way, uh, it's, yeah, I mean, it's like that. Um, the tri ring on both is in a different position as well. Um, but uh, I actually think this is more accurate than this one. Um, but anyway, by the way, the one in the Mandalorian is totally different. I'll, I'll do a separate video. Uh, this is more, this is more uh, the one from the films. So I've put this in and I'll, I'll light them up and compare these two for you right now as well. Yeah. Right. That's the Hasbro Black Series. Sensitivity is quite good. Right, pretty good. Um, okay, side by side comparison. Blade is very close in color. That one's a bit deeper green. That one was more yellowish green, but very similar. Sensitivity is close. I'd say the Force FX edges it slightly. Um, and, oh, this one obviously has the flash on clash. This one just make the noise. Sounds different too. This one has more accurate to the movie sound. Okay. This one has a more default sound from the force effects. These two are value for money, guys. These two are awesome. If you want something high quality, for the money, if you have a chance to go to Galaxy's Edge, this is the one to get, there's no question. The fact that you can remove this, you know, and you can display it with a thin neck, is awesome, right? It's absolutely awesome. And for, well, you, you gotta buy a blade for another 45, $50, but honestly, for this, you know, what you get, this piece, you know, for $130 plus that, it's a no-brainer. If you want something value for money, get this. Because as much, you know, as good as the... Let me put these away for a second. As good as the um, Corbant here and the Creepy Uncle here, as amazing as these two are, they're about $300 each. You know, it, it's twice the price, basically, roughly, right, of those two. The Hasbro one is $175. It's also great value for money if you don't get to go to um, Galaxy's Edge. But at the same time, if you can have the choice between the two, Galaxy Edge wins, obviously, with the interchangeable, 
you know, our middle and neck section. But anyway, these two are the premium, the top of the pile. This is by, for me, by far the most accurate The Last Jedi replica out there. Um, I'd say the Corbanth one is top three, most accurate. Um, Return of the Jedi, you know, um, we can talk about who's more accurate for hours. And I'm actually thinking of doing a series on that. Because, you know, some people are going to say this one. Some people are going to say uh, Seven Chambers, um, which which looks really good in pictures, by the way. When I get it in my hand, I, I, I can confirm. Um, some is going to say Anakin Starkiller. Some is going to say Vader's Vault. You know, um, KR Sabres makes a good idealized one as well. There are so many versions of these. Um, you know, who else makes them? Ultimate Works, you know, um, Sabre Forge. You know, they have the Prodigal Son. Uh, so many, so many uh, Luke heroes in the market. And right, rightly so right now. I'm sure a lot of people want to wanna have it right now. I'm glad I bought these right now. Um, I, I probably end up having too many because it's one of my favorite lightsabers. But at the end of the day, um, you know, it's, it's what you want and what you like. Some people might think the neck's too dark here. Some people might think the neck's too light here. This and that. They prefer idealized ring. They prefer uneven rings, like the actual prop. You know, um, it is what it is. Uh, that's why I have both. Because in episode 8 is idealized ring. Episode 6 is not. But um, if you want me to do the most accurate series, I'm going to start doing it. And this will be more for the custom saber fans. And I can list out every single lightsaber at the current place and at least give you guys my opinion. Which lightsaber is the most... Which co which company makes the most accurate lightsaber for that certain model that we do. And if you like that, please do hit like and hit subscribe. You know, um, once I reach maybe 100 subscribers, um, I'll, I'll do it. I'll do it. Uh, for, for you guys um, anyway so yeah please help the channel out I'm just starting uh, I'm not really a proper youtuber but it's it's nice to get some encouragement from from everybody but this is it for now guys if you enjoyed the video uh, please do support um, you know each like each uh, subscription is free and is uh, Gives me a lot of encouragement. Oh, here you go. Notice the longer control box, shorter control box here. <laughs> you know, you can pick out a lot of stuff. I'll do a more detailed one between the custom ones later, don't worry. Today was more mix and match of everything, right? So anyway, um, hope you guys enjoyed the video and may the force be with you, always.